Here's, here's one of them on animals. So uh, chickens, guinea fowl, um, they're uh, fenced in. See the asterisks on there? And someone mentioned that the chickens probably are not a great idea in blueberries. Uh, one thing about chickens is they totally will wipe out your mulch. <laughs> so if you, you know, some people don't have mulch, they might work for you better. If you have mulch, I don't recommend them because they'll totally destroy that mulch. They'll scratch around and all that kind of stuff. Now, weeder geese are interesting. In the 1950s, uh, they actually had, her uh, I don't know if they were called herds or a, a gaggle <laughs> of geese. Uh, they were, you know, geese, geese herders. They actually rented out large flocks of geese to go into farmers' fields, for example, in cotton and sorghum and turn these weeder geese out there and they actually would walk up and down and, and weed, they would eat the little weeds. And so you gotta get your plan up to this height and then the weeds that are there, they'll eat them. So, uh, but um, it's kind of an experimental thing, but like again, in permaculture and some of this sort of uh, organic, um, you know, try everything approach, that is really a, a possibility. And I actually wanna get some on our farm and try out. Another one is turkeys. Uh, I do know some people that use turkeys in, in uh, blueberries. Uh, however, that was before this sort of heightened um, emphasis on food safety and gap is going on, so I'm not sure how well that would work the same way they were doing them. I think the comment earlier about putting them in after they're done uh, harvesting would be okay, but on the front end while they're, the fruits are ripening, I think that's the issue. And then the same thing with sheep. I think you could, you could graze, and there's a lot of weed control that has all through July, August, September, October, you know, after, after the berries are done. This is a blueberry farm in uh, North Carolina, actually, it was, um, it was uh, you know, they do vegetables there, plus they have blueberries, it wasn't strictly a blueberry farm, but they started doing heritage turkeys for Thanksgiving, and uh, it, was a, it was a supplemental enterprise on the farm, they did well with it. Uh, I think they ended up going with the more traditional kind of a white bird because it actually put on more meat and that's what customers wanted, et cetera. But yeah, they, they had this integrated into their, to their blueberry patch out there. You see the fencing, the polywire fencing with an electrical charge. Plus here's like a chicken tractor style, movable coop, that kind of thing. Next strategy, now here's another one. Uh, another possibility, another option in your toolbox, also kind of minor, uh, compared to the, the hardcore stuff I'm gonna get to, but that is what are known as organic or green chemistry herbicides. And uh, here's a few labels that are currently on the market right now. Final Sano, I actually have that one on the farm this year. We tried it, and it is amazing how well it works. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's got, um, it's ammoniated salt of a fatty acid, and so you spray it on the green foliage and, and um, you know, you can spray it on stuff like that and, and you know, within a couple hours it's turning brown. The next day you come back it's like totally white. So it's really got some kind of a, uh, effect on the plant tissue and you can actually get online and find the patent for that material. Uh, there's some other ones that have other ingredients. Uh, this Weed Zap from JH Biotech. It has some lime, uh, D-limonone, has some clove oil, some various things like that. There's another one called Avenger. Uh, if you have followed this, you may have heard, heard or read some about this. Um, the one that really um, generated a lot of interest was acetic acid. And some of the original research on that was done by USDA. Um, so that is um, the, um, in other words, it's vinegar. Okay, so the vinegar you buy in the store to cook with and, and can with is like 3% vinegar. The stuff that they were using is 20% uh, vinegar, so it's much stronger. Um, the, so anyways, it uh, is also very effective. So um, yes, these are effective, but remember I said they're really minor in the big scheme of things because they, because they are used either at 100% uh, st uh, strength, like the acetic acid, or they're diluted at a, a really um, you know, strong dilution. So you take a synthetic um, herbicide, you look at the label and it says use like a, you know, one and a half to two and a half percent solution. On this stuff, it's like one to five dilution. 
on, on the final CNO. So it's like 26 fluid ounces per gallon. So you're, the cost of this is, is really high, and it does not go as far. So they're minor. They will not um, replace synthetic herbicides. You cannot treat a whole blueberry patch with these. They can only be used in a small spot treatment, that kind of thing. Now, I would love to have a tote of this stuff given to me. I would lose it on the farm a lot. We would totally keep the edges of our weed patch totally edged perfectly with this stuff. I would just send a worker out there, they would spray it, and everything would be great. But I can't afford it. There's no way. And, um, and just one more thing on, on the acetic acid, because you can find instructions on that online. That is kind of frowned upon. Um, the EPA has been kind of cracking down on that because um, some of the retail people started selling that and they don't put any in instructions on it because you're not supposed to really use it for a herbicide because it's not labeled for a herbicide. And, and some gardeners just got a hold of it and it has this strong odor. You should not be breathing this directly and, and they've had, it's not good. You should not have it in your eyes. You should not have it in your, you know, contact, et cetera, with your, 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 you know, your skin, your mouth, et cetera. So yeah, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna breathe it and you don't wanna get it in your eyes. So um, my, it's a minor thing, but good to know about for a little bit of touch up here and there if that's gonna be helpful. Oh, here's another one that you'll hear about and that is part of thermal weed control. This one is flame weeding. Um, and so I'm gonna mention that because this is another topic I covered for ATRA and have helped farmers um, understand and get into appropriately. Uh, but you see it's a propane tank. There are several outfits that do sell this kind of equipment. Um, here's an example. This is, a, this is a, a great night and day example. Here's a, a, a farmer seeding carrots in a bed. Carrots and parsnips are notorious for slow germination. They can take 21 days to germinate sometimes before they emerge really uniformly. And so what they do is they sow the bed and then um, prior to the, uh, the carrot emergence, they do a stale seed bed treatment. Okay, so they've waited a little time from the time they've seeded and now they've given the weeds a little bit of time to come up before the carrots, right? So they flame over the bed and they get stale seed bed weed control. And the neat thing about that is this, the difference is night and day. So there's the bed on the right was flamed, the bed on the left was not flamed and not treated for any kind of weed control just to show the difference in, in the kind of weed control that you can get, really significant. And what some people do is put plastic on the bed to encourage the weeds to grow underneath that spot and, and then they know when to flame. You're talking about tiny, tiny little weeds, and that's my next, my next point here, is that when this is effective is when the weed seedlings are tiny, okay? That's when this is effective. There is a little watermelon plant, and here's all the little weed, seeds, weed seedlings around it. When weeds are this big, flame weeding is not effective. So, um, so for two reasons, I'm pointing this out. You will, if you're reading in organic literature, you'll see this, but I'm suggesting that it's not going to be a big deal at all in, in blueberry con, uh, management. Secondly, it's a fire hazard with wood chip mulch, correct? Okay. So, however, this next technology, I think, has incredible potential, and I'd love to get a grant for the equipment to demonstrate this at the UK Horticulture Research Farm. And that is another form of, weed, of thermal weed control called steam weeding. Steam weeding, okay? So you're still getting these high temperatures. Uh, they uh, hit the plant tissue, they discombobulate the in cellular contents, they, uh, and so then therefore they, they wither down. They lose their integrity and they, you've actually achieved pretty good control. So here's, uh, here's a unit that was a research plot up in Canada. And you see you've got your, you got your boiler kind of situation. You've got your, your boom out there with the steam unit. And then here is a nice burnt down, killed down grass strip. So that's pretty impressive if you can get that kind of, a, of effect with steam weeding. And in fact, I, there was for a while a company out of New Zealand called Waipuna and they had what's known as a foam steam weeder and they were leasing out this equipment to landscape outfits and stuff. I saw a demonstration of this at a, at a conference in California and it was fantastic. You know, they actually did this. They, they laid out the steam foam 
and it totally browned off that vegetation just like that. Now here's the thing, this is a contact technology, it's a post-emerge contact, it is not systemic. So this is going to be effective for two or three weeks and you're going to have regrowth. So you're going to have to go back and do it again. But if you're doing an organic blueberry operation, you're, you've got year blowing and going, your plants are healthy and thriving, and you've got a nice crop, that is totally worth it in my opinion to come back and make a repeat application. So here's another, this is another um, piece of equipment out of Australia. This is um, uh, an example of a, of a vineyard. You can see the, it's a tractor drawn. It's got a trailer with a boiler tank, all that kind of stuff. And here's the, here's the jets with the, it's kind of aerated steam technology. And here it's coming out. And then here is, here it is, here's the vineyard berm. So that's much like, you know, any kind of a grass alleyway berm system, the vineyard berm, grass alleyway, and you can see the kind of control they got. So that's why I think that has a lot of potential, especially in blueberries where you have a wood chip mulch, which if you think about the, 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 the blueberry production system with the wood chip mulch or sawdust, it's perfect. In terms of soil management, it's fantastic. You get your soil cooling, you get your moisture retention, you get this rich interaction of soil biology and nutrient cycling interacting with the plant roots. And then if you could come by with a steam weeder on the side and keep the weeds from creeping in there, then you've got it nailed. So, um, but this technology is very expensive and it's not easily a a available. It's, uh, there's a couple companies in Australia that have this. There's been some research done at UC Davis and at University of Vermont. Uh, so I'm just hopeful that this can kind of come into the states and become more available. And I'll, I'll work on you know, trying to get some collaborations on that. So 